What I'm saying today is that essentially the policies of the Obama administration that we issued last July uh, make clear that you should not be receiving certain fu federal funds if you're not in compliance with 1373. Uh, we believe that grants in the future could be issued that have additional requirements. Now here's the problem, right? You get 300 communities across the country that are collecting federal funds and are somehow harboring these people that have come to our country illegally via these sanctuary city policies. How can that be? Why aren't they turning them over to the feds? I'm joined right now by former CIA officer Buck Sexton, conservative political commentator Gina Lund, and syndicated talk show radio host Chris Hahn. Good to see all of you guys. You know, Gina, this has come to light most recently because of concerns uh, about this Maryland issue. A couple of kids there, one, possibly two, raped a 14-year-old girl in her school in a bathroom, a tragic, tragic case. And people are asking, what on earth were these people, these kids, 17 years old, doing in the country in the first place, and why aren't they being turned over to the feds? It turns out sanctuary city policy enables, enables these people to be here and do these kinds of things? Preventable crimes. There's no other word for it, Trish. And as a, as a mom who lives in uh, right here on the border of Mexico, as you know, in San Diego, I know a lot of these uh, angel moms who've been affected by this. And let me tell you something. This is the narrative the Democrats don't like. Many, most of these angel moms and the families affected by the crimes of illegals are legal immigrants. They don't want to talk about that. This is a losing issue for them, Trish, because how do you advocate for criminal, uh, you know, illegals to stay here and hurt legal citizens and other Americans? Oh. I don't see how that's a winning issue I for mean, them. I mean, I think that the, the challenge is going to be what do you do about it, right, Buck? In other words, you heard there from Jeff Sessions today, and he kind of was issuing a little bit of a threat. He didn't tell us what they might do, but he's saying, look, cities, go on notice. We know what you're doing, and it's not okay. They may be able to cut off federal funding to some of these cities. That's the, the, the first uh, a tactic that I think that they would deploy if they don't see a change in behavior. I don't think they're going to see a change in behavior in L.A., New York, Chicago, major cities uh, for which the sanctuary policy, and sanctuary policy is also different in different places. It generally just means that they won't help in any way, including uh, going forward with detainer requests from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, but it can mean different things in different places. There are some smaller cities, though, that are afraid about being sued by groups like the ACLU. There are smaller places that have a sanctuary policy in place just as a defensive mechanism because they don't want to get caught up in all the legal wrangling. But for big cities like New York and L.A., the question becomes, are you willing to risk your federal funding and perhaps federal law enforcement funding, a funding that's the most uh -huh. obvious place? But the politics of this, of course, are all or nothing for places right, like right. Los Angeles. I mean, Chris so, Hahn, I mean, the reality is the politics matter so much because when it comes to politics, they're looking, the Democrats are looking for these votes. Uh, and, you know, if you're sympathetic to illegals, then perhaps you're sympathetic to uh, the Hispanic voting bloc, which could then, therefore, if you're a Democrat, you hope vote for the Democratic Party. Well, I think for all the bluster and the statements coming out of the administration and other conservatives, it appears to me that Jeff Sessions is going to go along with the Obama policy, which is basically federalism, which where the federal government basically waves the carrot at the city, and if the city doesn't want the carrot, they go along with their own policies. But what is mischaracterized in this debate is what this actually is. It's when you actually ask and find out if people are here legally. Some cities do it after the conviction. Other cities do it before the conviction, and that's what... Uh, the debate's about. When mm -hmm. do you ask? There's no such thing as a convicted person not finding out whether or not they're here legally or not. It's before or after the conviction, and that's okay, a question so, of so liberty, this, and that's a question of the If this is going to come down to money, I mean, you think about a city like San Francisco that relies on the feds for 10 percent of their overall budget. If that suddenly gets taken away, then that's going to be meaningful. Gina, are they going to have to wake up? Are they going to have to listen? And is the money going to make the difference in this? I think in the long term, the answer to that is yes, Trish. But in the short term, uh, the answer that uh, these, many of these cities and, and certainly the state of California itself and others will consider is just raising taxes on their citizens. The problem is you can only get away with that for so long. I know that Jerry Brown probably thinks he can do it forever, but at a certain point, you hope there's going to be a level of tolerance that has been surpassed, and they can't just keep taxing citizens to make up for what they're Thanks losing. Thanks to the whole team.